Hey everybody, welcome back to my shop. Now I've had a very busy week this week with seasonal work firing up and I also was set up at our local business expo last week and selling a lot of my wood turning work. So I haven't had a lot of shop time. So I figured for this week's video I'll take you along as I'm working on finishing up this wood turn sink. Now I don't have any turning on this sink because I did the turning on it before I started my YouTube channel, but hopefully there's still some good information. But still, please remember, this is not an instructional video, it is for entertainment purposes only, and your safety is your responsibility. Well, let's get started. So here's our dried sink blank. First thing we're going to do is true up the tenon so we can hold it in the chuck for sanding. The sink is quite tall, so to make sure that the rim doesn't hit the headstock, I've just chucked up a roll of duct tape to give us a little bit more space away from it. Yeah, that'll clear nicely. I'm shaping this tenon to fit my number four one-way jaws. You'll also see that I will remove a lot of the excess material from the center of the tenon. This will leave me less material to have to hollow through when we form the holes for the drain in the sink. To sand the sink, I'm going to use my homemade sanding arbors, which are nothing more than just a cheap old tool bit, piece of wood, some gym flooring, and some duct tape. But if you'd like me to go into further detail on how I made these things, let me know in the comment section down below and I'll make a more detailed video on it. Now I don't want to bore everybody with sanding too much, but I got one more tip to offer. And that's try not to hold the sandpaper perfectly flat, because the spinning sandpaper will try to catch and grab it and it'll go in every direction and you won't have much control. So kind of just pick off center to one side and stick with that, but make sure when you come to the rim that the sandpaper is traveling off the rim, not towards. If it's traveling towards, it'll try to catch that bark and it might try to rip a little bit of it off. So I'm just going to demonstrate briefly, and then i got to turn on the dust collector and we'll go to time lapse. So sandpaper trails off of the rim. If it goes towards the rim, it wants to catch and run away, and that's where you're going to run into problems. So it's trailing off the rim. Make sure to use long, smooth passes when power sanding a stationary object. This will create a surface with as few undulations as possible. Now to form the hole for the drain, I don't have a Forstner bit large enough. So I'm just going to use my parting tool and be very careful. We're at about 600 RPM. I think I'm still going to drill a hole first to make it a little easier to start working from the inside out. I'm just going to drill this out at about 300 RPM, nice, nice and gentle. I'm going a little bit at a time. So I don't overheat the drill bit, and so that when I hit the bottom, I don't hit the chuck. Because I only got about a quarter inch at most, maybe even 3 16 And it's getting close to the bottom, I can hear the sound difference. Here it comes. Good. Okay, we're back on track. I think I'm going to lower the tool rest just a little bit.
a little tight. A little snug in the bottom, but not bad. I think I might take just one last little micro cut. We have to make enough room for the epoxy. And if we don't, then after we finish the sink, we might not be able to put the drain back in. Now we have to set so that this bottom flange is slightly below the wood so we don't have any water pooling up. I'm just going to mark with my dividers the approximate width of that flange and then we'll just have to do a bunch of test fitting. Needs to be a little wider and a little deeper. Still needs to be a little wider and a little deeper. It's very close, probably a sixteenth and then the pressure of the nut will pull it in. There, that drain's fitting really nice now. I think I might just lightly touch that edge with some sandpaper and it'll be good to go. I'm using a two-part epoxy resin to finish this sink. It is waterproof, it won't yellow over time, it's BPA free, and it's even safe for food contact. It's mainly used for bar top coatings and it's also used for art preservation. Okay, the epoxy's all mixed up. We're now gonna start first applying it to the bark. We have about 45 minutes of work time with this stuff, so we have to work not super fast but fast enough it's going to be a little messy i've got my heavy duty ken's shopping bag in there duct taped to the chuck so the chuck should be safe this stuff is pretty thick so i think i hopefully have enough mixed up After making sure that the epoxy was spread evenly throughout the surface, I used a propane torch to pop any little air bubbles that were forming. Well, this turned out to be a bit more of a lengthy process than I anticipated. This oak is so porous that it's letting out air bubbles for the last, well, I guess I started applying this around 11.30 and it's just after 1 right now, but almost all the air bubbles are stopping, coming to the surface now. And I apparently mixed way more epoxy than I needed. So I had a ash bowl that I had had a mishap with and a little pen pot I keep my pens in in the shop and this old spalted poplar bowl that I figured what the heck throw some epoxy on them too and try to use some of it up but yeah hopefully I'll be done this in a few minutes then I can hit the sack and then get back at this thing and possibly put one more coat on tomorrow morning at about seven. So it's about 7.30 the next morning. I babysat it till almost two in the morning trying to pop little micro bubbles because this oak just kept wanting to release more air. But it came out pretty good and I think this next coat should level it all off nicely. Well, it turns out that the second coat of epoxy didn't quite level off the surface. And I've also got a couple of defects that I'll have to repair once the epoxy is fully cured. It turns out that yesterday's air bubbles have come back to haunt me and I might even have a couple of pieces of debris that came from the bark. So I think that next time I'll do the bark first separately and then the first coat that I put on the sink will be a very thin seal coat. This should help stop that air bubble problem. So here's the sink as it stands so far. Once the epoxy is fully cured I'm going to have to go back in and do some wet sanding to get rid of any of those defects I spoke about. Then I can put on one more coat of finish, let it cure, flip around the sink, get rid of this tenon, and then seal up the bottom with epoxy as well. 
and then the sink will be finally considered done. But if you like this video, please click the like button and share it around. If you have any suggestions or questions for me, please don't hesitate to fire those off in the comments section down below. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do. I'll have a new video out every Friday. So thank you very much and have yourself a great day.